And we turn to a strict new voter ID law in North Carolina, which is putting a spotlight on the broader national fight over when and where people can cast ballots. Protecting the integrity of every vote cast is among the most important duties I have as governor. And it's why I signed these common sense, commonplace protections into law. Pat McCrory, North Carolina's I'm first governor Republican Pat governor in more than two decades, defended the new law last night in a statement posted on YouTube. Under the statute, voters will have to present a government-issued photo ID, such as a driver's license, at the polls. The law also ends same-day voter registration, and it shortens the early voting period by a week. Republican State Senator Bob Rucho argued the measure will help prevent voter fraud when it takes effect in 2016. He said, quote, it's going to have a huge dividend for the state of North Carolina as far as restoring a level of confidence in government by making the electoral process secure. Opponents insist the real intent is to suppress turnout among Democratic constituencies, minorities, young voters, and the poor. In Raleigh today, the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People announced plans to challenge the law in federal court. This bill is not about voter ID. It is 57 pages of regressive, unconstitutional acts to rig and manipulate elections through voter suppression. Possible presidential contenders are weighing in as well. Former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton, a Democrat, sharply criticized the law last night in San Francisco. Citizens will be disenfranchised, victimized by the law instead of served by it, and that progress, that historical progress toward a more perfect union will go backwards instead of forward. In fact, North Carolina is the latest of several states with Republican-controlled legislatures moving to tighten voter rules. Just today, the American Civil Liberties Union warned Kansas that it must comply with federal voter law or face legal action. And U.S. Attorney General Eric Holder signaled last month that the Justice Department will challenge such laws. But that will be far harder now since the U.S. Supreme Court struck down part of the Voting Rights Act in June. We get two takes now on the voter ID law in North Carolina. Republican State Representative Tom Murray is a co-author of the measure. And Democratic U.S. Representative G.K. Butterfield is a former North Carolina Supreme Court justice and a critic of the new law. Gentlemen, we welcome you both Thank you. to the news Thanks hour. Representative Murray, let me start with you. Why was it necessary to reform the state's voting law? I think that voter ID is one of those subjects that is so common sense that it, most people in North Carolina uh, wondered why we didn't do it in the first place. We're, I'm, I'm proud that North Carolina has joined the 34 other states to enact a common sense voter ID law that, that uh, is, isn't going to impact a significant amount of North Carolinians. What, what we've uh, identified when we were uh, analyzing this, uh, this bill is that 97 percent of the people that voted in 2012 had a direct match in the div division of motor vehicles database and so we're willing to work over the next uh, few years to, to, to towards 2016 to make sure that anyone that needs a photo ID can get one and we're willing to give them one for free as well. But, but why was it necessary? I think that's a, uh, that's a question that, the, that you should ask the public. The public, uh, if you ask, and that's what I did. I, I went door to door in my, in my campaign. We did focus groups and talked to folks. And it was, it's just one of those common sense things that, that voters in North Carolina thought we, that we already had. I've seen numerous people come to the polls in North Carolina and present their ID expecting to ha be asked for it. And so it's just kind of one of those common sense things that makes sense to uh, 60 to 70 percent of the voters in North Carolina. And so it was a, it's, a, it's a good common sense policy for our state. Congressman Butterfield, he's saying it's just common sense and it's something most North Carolinians want. Well, first, let me thank you for putting the spotlight on this issue in North Carolina. It's very shameful that our legislature in North Carolina and the governor uh, have decided to make these radical change, changes in the election laws. There is no need for a voter ID law in North Carolina. We have four million people who vote in every presidential election and less than a dozen uh, reports of, of voter fraud. 
Uh, we can see right through this. We know exactly what it is. It's a political power grab on the part of the Republicans. Uh, for years and years, Republicans were shut out of the political process in North Carolina, and so they are determined now to, to control the legislature. They won the elections in 2010, and Governor McCrory was elected in 2012, and it's now their determination uh, to hold on to this power that they have acquired. Uh, it is discriminatory. It, it disenfranchises uh, so many groups of people in our state. It's going to cost a lot of money to enforce it, and shame on North Carolina for making this happen. Well, let me ask you, Representative Murray, about uh, several of those points. Uh, number one, that it's a political power grab, that there really are very few examples of voter fraud, and uh, that this is just a, a, an overreaction. I don't think it's an overreaction, and what we've seen from other states that are similarly situated to North Carolina, and probably the state that to look at the closest that, that resembles North Carolina is Georgia, where we've seen their voter ID law be in place since 2008, and we've seen turnout in, amongst minorities, including African Americans and, and Hispanics, go up since the voter ID law went into place. Another thing about the Georgia experiment that we've seen is over the five years that they've had the law in place, less than between 30 and 40,000 free IDs have been issued by the state of Georgia. So the impact um, hasn't been that great. That's less than, that's around, that's less than 1% of the registered voters in the state of Georgia. And I think you're going to see a similar experience here in North Carolina. And so when you're talking about a common sense measure like voter ID that 60 to 70% of the voters in North Carolina approve of, I think it's, I think it's a, right, a step in the right direction to improve the voting process and improve everybody's uh, sense of integrity. Yeah. And have confidence in the election results. Congressman Butterfield, I think I heard uh, Representative Murray say that in the state of Georgia, when the voter ID law was passed, turnout among African Americans actually increased. Well, let, let me tell you, North Carolina has had a good participation rate over the years. The, uh, the former governor and the North Carolina legislature have worked hand in hand to liberalize and to, and to make the ballot box accessible uh, to minority groups and to women and to, to students and, and senior citizens. Uh, we have been a model for the nation. Uh, and now to implement a voter ID law is going to, to result in 300,000 people who do not have any form of, of government issued identification to be disenfranchised. Uh, the legislature says, well, they can get a special ID card. Well, uh, many people will not do that. They will choose not to vote, and, and, and that's very sad. Uh, and the state's even saying now they will pay for a voter ID card. And the statistics show it's going to cost $800,000 uh, to implement a voter ID card program. Completely unnecessary. Another aspect of this law I want to ask you about, Representative Murray, is the fact that it does away uh, not only with, it does away with same day voter registration, but it also shortens the early voting period uh, by a week. It was 17 days, now it is 10 days. Why make it harder for people to vote early? Early voting is extremely popular, and what we've done uh, with this measure is to make sure that the same number of hours of early voting that were, were available in 2010 and 2012 are going to be available going forward. And so what we're doing is actually broadening the number of locations uh, that, that people will be able to access early voting, because one, one way that, the, that some enterprising election officials were trying to game the system was to have one location only accessible to a certain, certain vote voter block, and that, that cuts across both party lines. And so the best way to stop the gaming of the system is to make sure if you're going to have multiple early voting locations, you open them up all at the same time, all with the same number of, hour, same number of hours. And so it's, it's going to be more fair for our voters to have multiple locations for early voting. So, Congressman, now, just, if I could just yes, you, you hear what he's saying. That, that's nothing but a pretext for voter suppression. Let me tell you, the early voting uh, days have not been sufficient. Uh, the lines have been long, uh, and, and we actually need more voting dates, not less. And cutting it back to 10 days is, is nothing but a, a move to suppress uh, the African-American vote, uh, the youth What we vote, need is more voting locations. Well, and, and let me tell you, what, what the representative didn't say is that they've also eliminated Sunday voting. And we know that in all of the, particularly the southern states, African-Americans vote in higher numbers on Sunday before the election. What about his point that they, though, that they are adding what? more places to vote? That's right. Well, no, they're, they're giving the discretion to add more places. They have not established more early voting sites, and it is enabling more voting sites, at the same time reducing it to a 10-day window. Uh, this, is not, this is not giving the right to vote. It's taking away the right to vote. The Republicans have been doing this for a long time. The thing that has stood in there 
their way has been the Voting Rights Act. And on June the 25th, uh, the Supreme Court uh, struck down Section 4 of the Voting Rights Act. And 30 days later, in July 25th, that's when the legislature passed these sweeping changes. And now there's no oversight from the Justice Department. That's why I'm calling on Attorney General Holder uh, to look at this case very carefully and to consider filing a lawsuit. Uh, Representative Murray, just quickly, it is, we know that uh, in the voting last year that of the early voting, uh, something like 70 percent of African Americans took advantage of, of early voting in the last few elections, larger than, than the other voters. So you can understand why this looks like an effort to cut back on minority voting. What we want is more locations for everyone uh, to, to vote early, and, and that's what we're trying to achieve. And I'll issue a challenge to uh, Congressman Butterfield. I'd like to join with him to make sure that there, if we can identify anyone that needs a photo ID between now and January 1st of 2016, I hope his congressional office and my legislative office can work together to make sure that anybody that needs an ID can get one by January 1st, 2016. Will you work with me on that, Congressman? Well, Representative, we're going to try to work to get this law overturned. Uh, the Voting Rights Act is still enforceable. We're going to try to pursue a Section 2 claim under the, under the Voting Rights Act. This is clearly not only a discriminatory impact on minority voters, but it has a discriminatory intent, and we're not going to just sit by and, and watch it happen. Congressman Butterfield, Representative Murray, we thank you both. Thank, thank you. you.